In the world of television comedy, few names shine as brightly as Benny Hill. His zany sketches and playful charm captivated millions. But one shocking scene sparked a fierce backlash, leading to the show's unexpected cancellation. What could cause such uproar? Prepare for a wild ride as we unveil the scandalous moment that brought the Benny Hill show to a screeching halt, leaving fans in disbelief. The rise of Benny Hill and his comedy. When the Benny Hill show originally debuted in 1955, nobody could have guessed precisely how large it would grow. Though television presented Benny Hill, real name Alfred Hawthorne Hill, a far bigger stage, he had already established himself as a stand-up comic and writer. His program gained recognition fast for its physical comedy, crazy characters, and overdone slapstick humor. Hill was not hesitant to be whimsical. Viewers appreciated him for it. The brisk sketches of The Benny Hill Show set it apart. Most episodes had little of a plot. Instead, they consisted of brief bursts of overdone humor in which individuals would be chased, stumbled upon, or captured in ridiculous circumstances. Benny Hill's comic approach was a special fusion of double entendres, slapstick, and sarcasm. He could make lighthearted fun of everything, including politicians and commonplace events. Obviously, though, there was always that clever insinuation. Often backed by the classic yakety sax, Hill's comedy mostly relied on visual gags. And who would overlook his well-known pursuit scenes? Usually, Benny chased a queue of women, or himself, accelerated for humorous effect in these sketches. Although many viewers at the time enjoyed these gags, they ultimately became divisive. Early on, The Benny Hill Show attracted a huge viewership both domestically and abroad. Since his humor was so physical, anyone could understand the quips wherever they came from. It cut over language borders. Hill was a world star by the 1970s. The show aired in more than 100 countries, and Benny Hill gained household recognition from Europe through the United States. The worldwide success was astounding. Unlike many other British comedians, Hill broke into the American market where his brand of slapstick humor connected with viewers. People adored him mostly for his crazy sketches, which in many respects reflected their own. Hill's unquenchable approach felt like a breath of fresh air at a period when TV comedy were sometimes more subdued. The world Hill's star was rising in was changing as well. Though they were also a period of cultural change, the Benny Hill show peaked in the 1970s and 1980s. In the past, Hill's humor, which usually focused on fumbling guys and beautiful ladies in skimpy clothing, was viewed as irreverent and benign fun. But Hill's comedy attracted increasing criticism as conversations about sexism, feminism, and political correctness started to take front stage. To some, the comedy he used to be a famous seemed out of current. As society grew more sensitive of how women were portrayed in media, Hill's sketches, especially those concerning the objectification of women, became a source of conflict as feminist groups grew more powerful. For a rising portion of the population, his well-known chase scenes, where women in revealing clothing were pursued, no longer felt like pure pleasure. By the 1980s, the debates around the concept of political correctness in comedy had reached a fever pitch. Comedians were being criticized for telling jokes that were considered to be offensive or rude. In the midst of this wave of change, Benny Hill happened to stumble onto it. The underlying significance of something that was formerly considered humorous is now being investigated. When it came to finding comedy in skits that portrayed women as small objects of desire, was it still acceptable? If a more progressive mentality were to coexist with slapstick humor, would that be possible? Despite the fact that Hill's committed fans continued to defend him, the criticism was becoming increasingly loud. A number of people had come to associate his show with a form of humor that was no longer appropriate for the current era. Despite the fact that the shift in public opinion did not take place overnight, Hill found it increasingly challenging to ignore the criticism as more voices entered the conversation. As a result of shifting social norms and expectations, comedy evolved alongside society. 
In the 1980s and following years, the things that were successful in the 1960s and 1970s did not always appeal to people. Although it was initially the show that pioneered the practice of pushing the boundaries of comedy, The Benny Hill Show eventually came to symbolize the rapidity with which those boundaries may shift, the controversial scene in question. One of the people on The Benny Hill Show mentioned something regarding a scene that gained popularity for its portrayal of women and use of slapstick comedy. The scene of this sketch is one of a crowded park. Benny launches a ridiculous hunt after a beautiful woman he spots across the street in his well-known suit and bowler hat. Benny is catching up to her, and as he does a lot of hilarious events follow. The joke revolves mostly on physical comedy as he runs over park seats, strikes bushes, and narrowly avoids bikers. But the woman he is chasing is more of a show than a person with free will, since she is wearing something exposing. During the chase, there are wild reactions and lighthearted hints, but it soon veers into awkward ground. This scene's portrayal of women raises some alarming questions. Though the abuse is difficult to overlook, the objective might have been to make people chuckle. The woman begins to be a topic for Benny's pranks instead of a person with her own story. Many of the ridiculous jokes where her main role is to be pursued highlight her appearance instead of her character. Sexual innuendos and prejudices complicate the matter even more. Benny's actions that challenge conventional gender stereotypes have a lot of mixed meanings. Old conceptions of what it is to be male and female form the basis of the humor, therefore transforming men into bumbling chasers and women into objects of desire. Though the tone was supposed to be lighthearted, many viewers felt it was unpleasant and began to question if this kind of humor fit current society. Many viewers of this scene initially found it humorous and enjoyed Hill's wild approach. The amusing comedy appealed to some and the chase seemed like another odd sketch. Still, people's responses evolved along with social norms. Over time, something formerly considered as innocuous entertainment became a focus for criticism, mostly from media critics and women's rights organizations. Individuals began to grumble. Women's rights concerned groups denounced the photographs, claiming they supported negative preconceptions. Those who disliked the scene claimed it reflected a more general issue in comedy. It frequently reinforced traditional gender stereotypes and made women's parts seem ridiculous. The media began to cover how viewers were growing more and more uneasy over the content of the jokes. The network was in a difficult position by the time the discussion got underway. They originally claimed that the show was fine as it was all in good fun and fit Hill's humorous nature. Still, the tone altered as the criticisms grew more severe. Network executives had to revise their opinions, which sparked intense discussions on the show's future and its fit in a society undergoing fast change. That's so because comedy was greatly impacted by significant changes in society and culture experienced in the 1980s and 1990s. Criticism of the media changed significantly in response to the ascent of women during this era. Saying that women were being objectified and based on stereotypes Women's rights activists began to voice opposition against the way women were shown on TV and in films. Comedians who had been depending on this style of humor were now under intense observation. As the feminist movement developed, more and more individuals began to know the themes found in popular culture. Shows that used to make people laugh with their racial jokes started to attract flack for them. Benny Hill's pranks were exactly in the middle of this given their emphasis on slapstick and provocative comedy. More and more people felt that the humorous guidelines of past years were outdated and harmful. Sexually explicit content attracted more attention, since people yearned more realistic representations of gender in entertainment. Everyone considered what kind of humor was suitable as discussions of sexual abuse and equal rights for men and women grew in popularity. Objectification was acceptable at that time, but people were yearning comedy that treated everyone with dignity and respect. The concept of political correctness started to influence TV show production during this shift in society. Comedians were having more and more difficulty striking the ideal balance between free expression and the damage their gags might inflict. Benny Hill was at a crossroads. 
He was previously renowned for making people laugh by stretching the boundaries of what was allowed. People started to generate conflict in humor as more people were conscious of delicate subjects. Though there was a strong urge to respect the unique experiences of every group, there was also a great want to disobey laws and make people laugh. Many comics at the time developed a signature for this act of balance. Looking at Benny Hill's humor today from modern perspectives, it seems odd. Once seen simply harmless banter, this is now under serious examination to find meaning. The sexualized and objectified pursuit sequences transport us to a period when these kinds of representations were somewhat common. Having said that, changing culture also affected what people expected from entertainment. Though some people still enjoy Hill's work, it started to indicate what comedy needs to evolve beyond the network's decision to cancel the show. More than merely a moment of bad taste, the provocative scenario set off a review of The Benny Hill Show. The network started to consider how the show matched, or opposed, with the changing social conventions. Internal debates focused on whether it was reasonable to keep running a show that drew more and more criticism on how women were treated. Evaluating public pressure was much aided by Thames Television and the BBC, Growing unhappiness among viewers and the protests of women's rights groups clearly indicated that the cultural scene was changing. The network was in a difficult situation, trapped between honoring the long-standing popularity of the show and addressing legitimate public issues. Late in the 1980s, the strain peaked. The chronology leading to the discontinuation of the show in 1989 comprised a sequence of internal conflicts and outside demands. Complaints grew until the network could not ignore the changing public opinion. Thames Television's official comments revealed a dedication to changing TV standards and an awareness of the need to represent society's ideals. My personal reaction to the cancellation by Benny Hill was a combination of resignation and disappointment. Although he had developed his career on his own brand of humor, he knew the world had changed all around he. Hill revealed in interviews his grief at the end of the show, stressing the happiness it had offered to millions over years. He also agreed, though, that humor has to change if it is to remain relevant. Canceling the Benny Hill show ultimately represented a turning point in television history. It highlighted the influence of public opinion as well as how social movements change the media terrain. Once a shining example of lighthearted comedy, the show started to serve as a warning about the need for representation and the results of not adjusting to evolving society expectations. Benny Hill was shocked and depressed when his show was called off in 1989. For decades, the show had been a mainstay of his life, a stage on which he could showcase his original comedy approach. Hill expressed his letdown in several public interviews after the postponement. He believed he had helped humor to bring millions of people happiness and pleasure. Given the great popularity his show acquired over the years, he found it difficult to accept the sudden cancellation of it. Hill had a complicated view on his comic approach. He sometimes said he thought modern viewers misinterpreted his humor. The slapstick antics and cheeky innuendos, in his view, sprang from innocence and fun rather than from any attempt to offend. He thought the world had grown too sensitive, which made it difficult for comedians like him to work within the new limits of what was thought acceptable. His interviews reflected this attitude as he showed annoyance at being called obsolete or unsuitable. Though the cancellation hurt, Hill stayed glad of his work, often stressing that comedy should be joyful and that it was supposed to challenge limits. He was even under criticism. His dedication to his comic vision was relentless. For Hill, comedy was about laughing and connection. He bemoaned the fact many seemed to ignore that core. Benny Hill battled to fit the evolving comic scene in the years after the cancellation. Rising alternative comedy in the late 1980s and early 1990s changed the emphasis to more reflective and socially conscious humor. Comedians who excelled on sharp satire and cultural criticism started to rule the scene leaving Hill's slapstick approach feeling ever more alien. Hill tried multiple times to restart his career, including television specials and shows, but audiences responded differently than they had in past years. The world had gone on, 
and the humorous approach that had given him recognition now appeared antiquated. While some devoted supporters kept value for his work, the general public response was at best slow. Hill struggled to reclaim the ground he formerly occupied in the entertainment business. His later years were beset with medical problems. The once vibrant comedian grew more withdrawn as he battled worsening illness. Benny Hill died in 1992 and left a mixed legacy. Though he had provided amusement to millions, his death also signaled the end of a British comic period. Legacy of the Benny Hill Show The Benny Hill Show will always live in popular culture even though it closed. Many people see the show as a classic of British humor, and it is still a major component of television history. The genre has benefited much from the combination of humor, hints, and catchphrases. People still discuss the divisive incident that set off such strong reaction as a turning point in the development of humor. It illustrates how sometimes limited artistic expression results from society expectations forming itself. From a critical perspective, the scene itself also raises the present debates on how gender is portrayed and valued in media. Hill also affected the work of comedians following him, particularly those that employed physical humor. His comic approach is still appealing since many people have claimed to be influenced by him. His endorsement of slapstick techniques enabled following performers to employ visual humor and overdone scenarios in the same manner. Remember, notably in British TV, the media underwent significant changes when The Benny Hill Show closed in 1989. It demonstrated how networks and viewers were handling generally provocative and humorous content. TV networks focused more on the growing calls for responsible representation and the requirement of illustrating how society sees things in the years following Hill's departure. Networks started to be more rigid about what they displayed as individuals become increasingly conscious of issues of gender equality and representation. This shift was not limited to the UK. TV shows all across noticed it as well. Comedians and shows that used to live on edgy comedy were closely observed for how they portrayed underrepresented groups. The entertainment industry came to see that outdated comedy cliches couldn't be exploited without running afoul of laws. To create programming appealing to a greater spectrum of viewers, networks started pushing diversity and inclusion. Canceling The Benny Hill Show had a significant impact and set a benchmark for handling contentious content today. This led to discussions on the responsibility of entertainment and the damage some representations might inflict. Political correctness and shifting public opinion on issues have caused comedy to evolve greatly since The Benny Hill Show. Comedians now have to find their place in a society when individuals are more sensitive than ever. When crafting jokes, one of the most crucial considerations is how they might impact other populations. Many comedians have had to modify their techniques to appeal to contemporary audiences since Benny Hill. While some have battled back against what they perceive as restrictions on their capacity to be hilarious, others have embraced more considerate and inviting methods. Regarding this continuous conflict, the comedy community has responded in somewhat varied ways. Comedians like Ricky Gervais and Dave Chappelle, for instance, have created debates by discussing sensitive issues in a way far different from their regular approach. Comedy should, they argue, challenge the boundaries and inspire thought, even if it means offending some people. However, some people find their behavior unacceptable, which highlights the challenge comedians have in juggling their artistic vision with cultural sensitivity. Benny Hill's issues are not special. Many other comics and shows have had the same ones. For example, the way The Office portrayed how business relationships function and how frequently it employed awkward humor drew criticism from the UK iteration. Though it's still a revered classic, discussions on what it entails reveal how constantly evolving comedy is. Shows like Family Guy and South Park have been defying American standards for years, frequently running afoul of policies due to their improper content. People truly like these concerts, and they have also begun discussions about the need of context in comedy and how humor may influence events. 
The continuous struggle between comic independence and cultural awareness shapes the comedy scene today. People's expectations of entertainers fluctuate with their own changes. Comedians still find it difficult to challenge the boundaries knowing the messages they convey and the consequences their gags could cause. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this look at the controversial scene that led to the end of the Benny Hill show, be sure to like and subscribe for more fascinating insights into classic television.